Hi everyone, I hope you're good. So for those of you that did the press to impress challenge that I sent on Wednesday, a huge thumbs up to you. Thank you so much for all your messages and your pictures and your little videos that you sent me of how you've been getting on with press work at home. I know it's not easy at all. It's still something that's a work in progress for me. I still absolutely feel it sort of head to toe everywhere when I'm doing them myself. And if you haven't done the press to impress challenge, then please go ahead and do it. I'll make sure I put a little link for you so you can get started and you can just see you know if there's any improvements and how many presses you were able to do at home and also because of that we're going to implement some of that into our class today so if you're like oh I haven't done it don't worry about it at all I'll teach it step by step but if you want a bit more in depth then I would head over to the challenge because it's all stort, stort? it's all taught step by step there um, let's get started in this class, we're going to start off by laying ourselves down. So you want to make sure that you're nice and comfy there on your back. You're in a good headspace, allowing the shoulders to just melt away from the ears. Palms of the hands facing up towards the sky. Now I've got the knees bent to get me started because I prefer this for the back. So if you're like me and you tend to get, I don't know, a little bit of flare up every now and again or sciatica, then what I want you to do is allow the ribs to just slowly drop down towards the floor, navel to spine as well, down towards the ground, and just feel that pelvic tilt slightly as you press your entire spine down into the earth. So we're going to take a nice deep inhale through the nose, and then a long exhale out through the mouth. And same again, deep inhale through the nose, and long exhale out through the mouth. And another one, just like that, nice and easy. Now, whenever you're ready, we're going to bring both knees in towards the chest, take the feet off the ground, and gently sway the knees side to side. So you can keep your eyes closed with this one if you want to. You don't really need your eyes open here at this point. Should be nice and easy, nice and simple. That's how we like it. So we're going to bring the arms out towards the sides into a T-shape and we want to anchor the arms down into the floor and slowly take both knees over towards your right hand side and turn your gaze over towards the left. So you've got this full spinal twist. Should feel really good if you've been sitting down a lot. Make sure you breathe. It's a really good rinse out for the spine as well as the digestive system. Come back to centre, float it, the knees over towards the other way, so knees towards the left, head turns towards the right. So just allowing the chest to open, don't worry if the shoulder doesn't touch the floor. And then come back towards the centre. So we're going to keep hold of this right knee and lift the right knee in and up towards the right shoulder and extend your left leg out there in front of you. So tracking is key, keep this left leg in alignment there with the left hip. And then we're gonna slowly swing this left leg up and down. You can see I'm kind of drawing a straight line here with that leg or with the foot. Try and point those toes. So really energize the whole leg, even towards the feet and toes as well. All right. It's just a really nice way of prepping the hip. And then we're gonna change sides. So I'm gonna keep hold of that right leg just make sure I don't keep something here. And lift that left knee towards the left shoulder and then do the same thing again, taking it nice and slow. You can do it slower than me. You don't have to kind of follow the same pace as I am, but that right leg just moving up and down. Again, nice deep breaths. So make sure the leg is in alignment there with the hips, especially if you get clicky hip. Uh, it's always one hip that's kind of the clicking and the clunking then it could be that you need to kind of swing this leg just take it could be your tracking is off and you need to move it say half an inch to the right or to the left to so play around with that okay so we're going to bring both knees in towards the chest now open the knees out super duper wide soles of the feet face up towards the ceiling hands onto the hamstrings feet maybe ankles and you want to be in a happy baby so allow the legs to just move down at the sides of the body. Again, take some nice deep breaths, shoulders moving away from the ears, and this is a really nice way of opening up your hips, your lower back and inner groins especially, because let's face it, when are we ever in this position like in day-to-day -day life? So 
use this one you know it's such a good one for especially if you've got like a sit down job or sort of any tightness going on in the body okay whenever you're ready we're going to let go of the legs roll yourself all the way up and what i want you to do is go into all fours so you've got shoulders above wrists and hips stacked above the knees let's move here out of the way okay so once you've done that okay once you've done that um, spread the hands out really, really wide, so push away the floor, and then you're going to take your knees super duper wide, so I'd say about sort of shoulder width apart or the same width of your mat is pretty good, and then bring your big toes together, walk the hands back a few inches, so it's like you're almost sitting down on the heels, but not quite, and then what you're going to do is lift your left arm up towards the sky, and take that left elbow down towards the floor, it may or may not touch, but I'm bending the right elbow, and you're going to do that a few times so get that nice big stretch as you lift up and you can either reach towards the ceiling or towards the back you know whichever is working for you all right again you don't have to go at the same pace that i'm going maybe you're going a little bit slower maybe you're just holding the pose rather than doing the reps like i am absolutely fine okay so we're going to go over towards the other side now and down, so pressing down through the left hand and the right arm, doing some work now. So big stretch of that right arm, and then of course bringing that right elbow down towards the floor, or maybe touching the floor. So if my knees were in their original position here on all fours, um, I wouldn't be able to get as far as a reach. So I'm really looking to open up through the chest, through the shoulders it's quite hard sometimes to stretch that area around but this one gets into it nicely okay so i'm going to do one more all right and then slowly come down so if you need to do this in a seated position that's absolutely fine by the way i'm just going to take a few shoulder little circles here trying to warm them up you can go forwards as well if you want to switch it up and then with the arms I'm going to circle them around. So we did these in the press to impress challenge as well. All right. So once you've done that and maybe rolled around the wrists, now you can play. So we've got all fours. All right. Relax the toes there behind you. In fact, press the tops of the feet deep into the floor. Once you've done that, keep spreading the hands out and keep the arms straight. We're going to rock backwards and forwards. And already <laughs> you might be able to feel that, oh, okay, the shoulders going just slightly ahead of the wrists is challenging enough as it is. Okay, so see how you feel. Then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come onto all fours, take the shoulders slightly ahead of the wrists, navel to spine, so don't drop, kind of lose your back in this when you want to hug the ribs in. Get that core nice and strong and then I'm going to bend the elbows, you bend them as low as you want to go and then push back up and ease off back. Alright, like you're doing child's pose or you can do child's pose if you want to. So come up onto all fours, shoulders go slightly further forwards ahead of the wrist, lower down as far as you want to or you can, push back up and push back. So don't lose your core, don't let your bum stick out. You want to make sure the whole time you've got this whole core awareness here so you are not just putting all this weight into your wrists but you're using your whole body wisely okay so now you should be joining in with me moving backwards and forwards i don't care if you're lowering down only half the way it doesn't matter or you're able to go all the way down touching that chin towards the floor and do you notice that the elbows they're bending in alignment there with the shoulders the elbows aren't winging out to the side so if you're finding that your ego's getting in the way, you're trying to lower down too much and your elbows are sticking out to the side. No, 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 you've got to only lower down halfway. Halfway is where it's at until your shoulders have understood what you're asking of them. Okay, so now we're going to rest out here. Oh, in child's pose, if you haven't done already, you can drop your head all the way down by the way. You can also adjust the knees if you want. I prefer the knees being a bit wider um, in child's pose for me personally rather than the knees together and make sure you get this nice stretch out here reaching the hands the fingers forwards if your arms are ahead of you of course or you can stack the hands on top of one another and rest the forehead down all right 
So whenever you're ready, slowly come up. Now this time we're gonna go into mermaid plank. Don't you hate it when you're doing yoga and you get like a hair in your face or something, it's just annoying, or in your mouth. So we've got all fours, but now the difference is, is we're gonna walk the knees back and I'm gonna bring the knees to come together. For me, that feels uh, better for me and my body and press the tops of the feet down. So don't let your feet leave the floor. Now, as soon as you start bending the elbows, if you find that the hands are too far forward and you bend, it's gonna feel very wrong. So you need to make sure that the hands are underneath the shoulders and then walk them back another, say, half an inch is good. So you've got your shoulders still ahead of the wrists. Make sure that the pelvis is slightly moving forwards as well. So you don't want, again, want to be sticking your bum back arching the back, you want to be lengthening your tailbone towards the backs of the knees and feeling almost like you're doing a pelvic tilt, all right? So core is engaged, navel to spine, hugging the ribs in, we're going to lower down, elbows bend in the line with the shoulders, we're going to push back up again. If you're like, no, I can only go down like that much, that's okay, that's how I started too. Are you ready? Let's go. Push up. Now without changing the knees or the hands, push back. Forwards into my weight plank, drop down. Come back up, push back. You're doing good, keep going. Nice deep breaths. So I'm a bit robotic here because I'm trying to sort of demonstrate to you guys correct form, but then you wanna make sure that you're taking it nice and slow. You're breathing, you're present all the way through. Now when I push away the floor, my thoughts isn't, oh my goodness, my arms are trying to push. I'm trying to lift up via my core and my hips. So I imagine that someone's trying to lift my hips up as well as me pushing away from the floor. We've got a couple more. All right, if you haven't done already, you should be in child's pose. One more, press down through those fingertips. Don't just rely on your poor wrists. Come up and child's pose. Woo! Again, nice deep breaths. Oh, definitely roll around the wrists if you need to. And from here, slowly rise up. Again, you can be in a seated position. You don't have to be kneeling uh, like me from here. So we're just gonna take palms of the hands on top of the thighs and flip the palms of the hands to face upwards towards the ceiling. Close the eyes. Maybe the heart's beating a little bit faster. Maybe one hand on the heart. It just reminds me you that you're alive, that you're here that you're present, shoulders moving away from the ears. Let that neck get nice and long, lifting up through the crown of the head. Okay, whenever you're ready, reopen the eyes. Come back onto all fours, and we're gonna move into downward facing dog, maybe something a bit familiar. So tucking the toes underneath, once you're on all fours, lift the hips up towards the sky. Ah, oh, that's good, roll the shoulders back and away, and then take a nice walk on the spot and alternate between bending, and straightening out the legs. Good. And just find your downward facing dog so there's no movement from here. Keep rolling the shoulders away. Keep the body nice and long. Come up really high up onto the balls of the feet and then walk the feet forwards towards the head of your yoga mat or towards your hands. Feet hip distance apart. Bend the knees, let the body hang down super duper heavy towards the floor. Keep the knees bent and slowly round the spine to come up to standing, allowing the arms to just hang down nice and heavy. And then finally roll the shoulders back, reach the hands up towards the sky into prayer and bring the hands to come down towards the chest and heart center. So you wanna make sure, like I said, just somewhere at the head of your yoga mat is always a good place to start. Lengthen your tailbone down towards the heels, bring the hands to come to prayer. Inhale, reach the hands up towards the sky. On your exhale, forward folding down. This time, hold on to the back to the legs and see if we can straighten out the legs a bit more or maybe fully um, in comparison to when you were here just moments ago. So navel to spine, think about rolling the shoulders back and away. Try not to have all your weight there in the heels. And then hands to shins, we're gonna inhale, lift up halfway. On your exhale, forward fold down. And one more time, inhaling, pushing away from the shins. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhaling to forward fold down, bend through the knees. Step that left foot back to your low lunge. And this one is a really nice one as well for the hips. So we're gonna rock backwards and forwards. Just make sure that you're opening up there 
through the hip flexors, getting everything nice and ready. And lower the back knee down, either hands to hips or hands lifting up towards the sky into your crescent lunge. Take your time. Press that front foot deep into the floor. And from here, slowly come down with the fingertips. We're going to change sides from here. So step forwards as many shuffles as it takes. Forward folding down, hold on to the backs of the legs, roll the shoulders back and away. Inhaling, lifting up halfway, Adho Uttanasana. Exhaling to forward fold down, then through the knees, stepping back with that right foot going into low lunge. And we want the feet hip distance apart. We're going to rock backwards and forwards. Again, nice deep breaths. And then lower the back knee down, rising up into your crescent lunge, either hands to hips or following me with the hands up towards the sky. Imaginary beach ball in between the palms of the hands. Make sure the feet are nice and strong, setting down into your mat. Slowly come down, fingertips to earth, tuck the toes underneath, and stepping forwards into Uttanasana, forward fold. Nice job, roll the shoulders back and away. Inhale, lifting up halfway. Exhaling to forward fold down. Bend the knees, step back with that left foot. Now this time we're gonna come up into high crescent lunge. So feet hip distance apart, lift the hands up, or hands to hips. Just pause and hold it right here. Good. See if we can just lower down just a little bit more. Pause for one more breath, shoulders moving away from the ears. And from here, slowly come down onto the fingertips, stepping forwards, forward folding. Inhale, lifting up halfway. Exhaling to forward, fold back down, bend through the knees, stepping back with that right foot. Feet hip distance apart, coming up into your crescent lunge. And remember, it's your crescent lunge. It doesn't have to look like mine. Okay, it doesn't have to look like anybody else's, as long as it's safe. Press the feet deep into the mat, lift up through the pelvic floor muscles. If you've got your balance, maybe close your eyes. That's always a good test. <laughs> or maybe if you're like, no, no, I don't want to, that's fine. And from here, slowly come down onto the fingertips, step forwards. Into forward fold, feet hip distance apart, hang down nice and heavy or hold onto the backs of the legs and get deeper into that forward fold. Inhale, lifting up halfway. Exhaling to forward fold down, bend through the knees, press the hands into the floor and you're gonna step the feet back here into plank pose. So if you need to come onto all fours first, that's absolutely fine. But we wanna make sure once we're in plank, we've got shoulders above the wrist, we're spreading the hands out nice and wide. We're not halfway in like a downward dog, and we're not sagging the hips here either, we're pushing away. Alternatively, you can be in a mermaid plank, it's absolutely fine. And now we need to close the eyes, breathe, and make sure you link with your core. So you wanna feel like you're trying to lengthen that tailbone, you've got like a slight pelvic tilt here where you're not kind of tipping the butt up towards the sky, you kind of locked it there into place, Hugging the ribs in. Stay with me. And whenever you're ready, from here, let's take the knees down first. Or you can go into full chaturanga if you want to, you know what you're doing. And then come down by bending the elbows. And finally lift the chest and heart nice and high, coming into cobra pose. Or maybe you're an upward facing dog. Careful not to let the feet go like far apart in this pose. Roll the shoulders back and close the eyes. Take another breath. And last breath from here. Cute lifting the chin, the chest. Set the feet strongly into the mat and finally push back into child's pose. So you can kind of wriggle the knees a little bit wider if you want to and press down through the shins as well as through the tops of the feet. Maybe give the body a little wriggle as well as it acclimatizes to being in the pose. Really get that nice expansion there of the rib cage, like the ribs are lifting up towards the sky as you inhale. And on the exhale, that nice deflation as everything kind of moves downwards. Finally, coming up to a seated position, 
Oh, we're gonna seal off our practice just with a nice little stretch from here. So bring the hands to come to prayer. And we're gonna inhale, reach the hands up towards the sky. Feel as if you're trying to touch the ceiling. Then you're gonna take your right hand down towards the floor, move it out towards the side and away from your body and side stretch over, soften the right elbow. Try not to lock your arm out. It kind of prevents you from getting deeper into the pose and into the stretch. Come back up, reach the hands up, get long in the body, and again over towards the other side, left arm reaching out towards the side and away. And um, just don't cheat with this one, you want to make sure you're pressing both butt cheeks into the floor. And from here, slowly come up, let's seal it off, bring the hands to come to prayer, inhale, reach the hands up towards the sky. And slowly bring the thumbs down towards the third eye for your vision and dreams. Down towards the mouth and throat for clear speech, good conversation, immunity. Down towards the chest and heart for love, compassion. And finally down towards the lower part of the belly for good instincts, fire and healthy digestion. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing and rocking out with me on the yoga mat today. I will see you next time. Don't forget to go over to that challenge if you need to kind of like just jazz up your presses just a little bit. It links so nicely to Chaturanga Dandasana if you're struggling with that one. Any questions you have, always ask away. And I'll see you next time on the yoga mat. <laughs> Bye.